All right, guys, welcome back. So if I show you exactly what we're going to be looking at first, show you a few examples, and then it will give you a better idea of what we're going to be looking at into the video. So as you can see, right, we've got lower lows and price action. Okay, liquidity gets swept, right? And we also get higher highs on the RSI, right? So lower lows on price action, higher highs on the RSI. We get a rejection and a sweep of this level and we see a move up. Right, we've got some liquidity being generated through there. We get a higher high on price action and we also get a lower high on the RSI on the same moves. We get a rejection of this level and then we see a rollover. If you look here, we get lower lows on price action, higher lows on the RSI. Right, we also sweep this liquidity through here and then we see a push higher. Here, higher highs on price action, ever so slight lower highs on the RSI. Again, rejection of that level and we see a rollover. Higher highs on price action. Lower highs on the RSI in the same move. Roll over. Lower lows in price action. Ever so slight higher lows on the RSI and a push higher. I mean, you can make the case that between this swing point and this swing point, we actually get lower lows, whether or not that's forcing it. Small rejection there and a small relief. But definitely between this swing point, we get higher highs on price action, lower highs on the RSI on the same moves, right? Get a rejection of that level. I tap back into it and you can see we roll over. Lower lows on price action, higher lows on the RSI. Get some relief, okay? And if we look down here, lower lows on price action, higher lows on the RSI, get a rejection on that level and we get some relief, right? All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be all about RSI divergence, okay? So this, the RSI is a, it's a good tool to help you identify potential reversal points in a market okay or the way that we're going to identify it or use it sorry i'm going to show you some uh, things to look out for if you want to use the rsi purely as a strategy so there's a few things that you need to you need to know okay before we get into this right the way we're going to be using this reversal strategy it works best in ranging markets okay so markets that are moving like this right so markets that are just moving like this okay so range bound right this doesn't work so well in markets that have just got strong trends okay and it also doesn't work very well i've found in most stocks okay the majority of stocks i find that you can get a lot of full signals using this okay of course you can move it over to stocks right but you, you need to make some adaptations that we're not going to be looking at in this video okay so just bear that in mind right you're going to want to use a seven period rsi okay so if i just bring up the settings right inputs length seven right source close okay a seven period rsi obviously you can use it on any time frame right but just bear in mind right when you start moving down to like let's say a one minute time frame okay and you want to use rsi divergence on a one minute it does still work but you just need to be a little bit more well versed in understanding that there's a lot more market noise on lower time frames and that you're going to be there's going to be times where the market's going to shake you out and give you a signal that maybe you, you need to wait for. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Right, so what is RSI divergence? Okay, what, what, we're, trying to, what we're trying to identify, okay, is the market in a short-term trend, okay, and we're trying to find the inflection point 
of this trend. Okay, so we're looking for a reversal. Now, what generally happens as the trend nears its end or potentially nears its end is when it makes lower lows, okay, so a lower low, right? A lot of the time, what we'll, what we'll see on the RSI is the RSI will be making a similar move. On this move here, the penultimate move down, we've got a lower low on the RSI. And then when we make a lower low on price action, we actually get a higher low on the RSI. So instead of the RSI, or so instead of the price action having this type of move and the RSI having this type of move, the RSI is actually diverging from price action. Okay. Which is a sign that the, the trend is likely to start weakening. Okay, we don't want to then we don't want to just see this and then buy straight away. We now we've now got evidence that the market is likely to start um, that is running at the market is starting to run out of steam, and we want to try and identify potential entry signals that are going to increase the probability of a trade in the opposite direction. Okay. So if we was looking at this on the flip side, right, we'd be looking at a market that is ideally moving up. And as the market starts potentially running out of steam, the RSI will start making lower highs when the price action is making higher highs. Okay, so the RSI is diverging from price action. Again, it's not necessarily going to shoot all the way down here. It may just be a little bit of short-term relief. Okay, but we can start looking for potential entry signals or confirmations that the market is going to give us some relief. So what do we need to know about RSI divergence? This, again, like I said, isn't always going to signify a complete trend change. Okay, this may just be a little bit of a relief on a pullback. You know, it's not always going to result in a massive trend change. Okay, so you need to bear that in mind, right? So if we just take a look at some examples on the chart of some RSI divergence, right? And then I'll start uh, introducing some entry signals or some things that we may want to pay attention to at these inflection points or potential inflection points to allow us to get involved in some trades, right? So if we just, let's just, uh, scroll the chart back a little bit in fact I was going to replay it but I'm not going to replay it because it will take too long okay I want this video to be sort of short and sweet right but we'll start from here okay so as you can see here right we've got a low okay the market's been in a downtrend we've got a low right if we was to just draw a horizontal line here you can see that we get a lower low here right so the market is creating lower lows and on the same move on the RSI, we've got higher lows, okay? So signifying that the market is likely, is potentially running out of steam. So now that we've got that, right? Now that we've got that, we've got a lower low on price action, and then we've got a higher low on the RSI. Now we want to look for potential entry signals into, an up, uh, into a trade, right? And again, we're not necessarily looking for a full trend reversal, right? We're just looking for a little bit of relief, okay? Again, this could result in a trend reversal, so you may want to sort of adjust your targets accordingly, but we'll get into that a bit later, right? So we know that we're in a downtrend and we may be getting some relief due to the RSI, right? And again, you can see a similar sort of thing here, right? Lower lows on price action, okay? Higher highs on the RSI get some rejection and then a little bit of relief, right? So what could we look for here, okay? Well, we can look for a, a few things, right? We just wanna see that there's some strength in this market. So we can look for a pin bar, right? Like this one, okay? Which is a sign of uh, strength to the upside. We can look for a three bar reversal, so the market coming down, finding some support down here, right, or sweeping some liquidity and then making a move to the upside. 
or we can look for tweezer bottoms again which is just another strength another sign of strength in the market okay so like this right where the market comes back down and then shoots up right but would we necessarily be looking for it right here no because we get the divergence there right you can see look even though these are tweezer bottoms we wouldn't necessarily want to take the trade there because we've got the divergence on the next candle okay or the next run of liquidity right which we then get a pin bar and then we see some slight relief okay and then again what happens right highs higher highs on price action lower highs on the RSI and then we see some a little bit of relief right obviously not not a great deal of relief but a little bit of relief right so anyway let's get back to the trade wheels on okay so lower lows in price action we then want to wait for confirmation we get the confirmation okay this is a three bar reversal okay so what you can do here is you can buy at market put your stop a few pips below the low because you know we shouldn't see another sweep if we do we can always re-enter okay but we're Look at, we're looking at this as this is the sweep of the liquidity, okay, and we're now going to see some higher prices, okay. So, to keep it simple for this example, looking at targets just as a two to one, okay. Now, the reason why I like to look at targets simply as, as a two to one, okay, like as a very baseline test is because this type of move, like I said, is, is what I have found personally, right, is. That it's very relative, okay. So the moves are very relative to the previous price action. So what that means is, let's say that we get a very small move, right, and we get a very small move on the RSI, okay, and we get a very small entry signal. What I've personally found is that how much price moves is quite relative to the the size of the signal you get okay and this is just purely because of the amount of volume that's in the market right the the, the trading volume generally you're not going to get a move like this and then it result in an exponential move upwards obviously that does happen but just as a general rule normally the moves are quite relative the same as if you get a big move down you, you most likely get a bigger move up right so again, I hope that makes sense. So a lot of this sort of stuff, you're going to have to just put the time into the charts and sort of revise it yourself and go through it yourself. It doesn't matter how much I sort of tell you a lot of this stuff. You're going to really need to, just to really solidify it, you've got to go through it yourself, right? And sort of make your own rules and make your own judgment up on it, okay? Because there's a lot of intuition with trading that you just can't teach and it just comes from reps in the market, okay? So again, a valid three bar reversal, right? And you can see higher prices, okay? So, let's just get rid of that. Right, you can see that we have reached, we're, we've been in an uptrend, okay? Lower time frame uptrend, right? And we're starting to peak on the RSI, okay? So we can potentially start looking for divergence on the RSI now, which we, let's see, 79.31, 78 so we get ever so slight divergence okay between this peak and this peak now just remember we're not always looking for a full-blown reversal right we're not necessarily looking for the market to crash all the way down here right this is quite a small inflection point so we're expecting a relatively small reversal okay this is these are tweezer bottoms right and you can buy you can sell this at market okay on tweezer bottoms right so the way that let's talk about some entry signals quickly okay so we've talked about the divergence and identifying the setup okay it's very it's relatively simple right you get a higher high on price action a lower high on the rsi generally it's going to come after an up move or a down move okay it's going to be an inflection point of a trend okay let's look at some entry signals so the way that i like to enter this is if we've got a pin bar right 
which is a candle that just looks like this, right? A candle that just like uh, that looks like this. I like to set limit orders under the candle. And obviously my stop loss above the candle. Right, and the reason I like doing this is because I don't want to just sell the market straight away if the market is just going to continue upwards, right? I like some sort of confirmation that the market is likely to move down into my direction, right, before I actually get entered into the trade, okay? And that does save you from a lot of losers, right? Okay, so I set limit orders on pin bars, right? On a three bar reversal, okay, so when the market is traveling up, let's just make this a bit darker. Right, when the market is moving up, okay, so this is a bullish candle. We then get a smaller indecision candle. Right, a doji, or it could be like another pin bar, most likely a doji, right? And then the market starts moving in the starts moving lower right so we get a three bar reversal so a push up we hold we find some resistance and then start moving the other direction that is also a good sign that the market is likely to reverse okay or at least some sort of relief right maybe not necessarily a complete reversal but some sort of relief okay again relative to the to the move right or to the previous price action, okay? Generally. So a lot of the time with uh, this type of move, a three bar reversal, or actually buy at market, so I won't set the limit orders, okay? Because, you know, if I was gonna set a limit order, technically it would be there. So price already has started moving in my direction, okay? So that's sort of the reasoning behind that, right? It's not just random. Okay, so that's two entry signals we've discussed. Okay, a pin bar, three bar reversal, and again, tweezer tops, which personally I find are, they're the most, I don't want to say subjective because your trading should be very rules based, but they can be the most, they can be the most subjective, right? So, and I'm not going to get into too much depth around tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms. I'm going to let you make your own rules up for them. But I like to see a move, a push up, and then a very similar move down. Okay, so, you know, the, the up and the down are very similar. I don't like to see a down that just looks like this. Okay, to me, that isn't a tweezer bottom. Right, and ideally, you want to see it break below. Okay, and the close ideally wants to be in the lower third of the candle otherwise it, it's not a very strong sign of a push down okay so if the price starts here pushes down but then gets sucked all the way back up here that's not to me a, an ideal scenario okay i want to see price start here and just be pushed down right and ideally break below the lows of this candle okay so you can see this is quite a strong push down right so again you can sell that at market or you can set limit orders okay it's completely up to you how you decide to do that you can set limit orders below the candle or you can sell at market right for this example we'll just sell at market okay so look you can see that we started moving down right and then bang get stopped out okay so that would have actually been a loss but then if you look we've actually got a very similar scenario playing out right we've still got a valid trade entry okay so we've got higher highs on price action right lower highs on the rsi okay higher highs on price action lower highs on the rsi right we get a tweeze we get a pin bar so we can set our orders right and then a two to one right just for a pure baseline two to one obviously there's so many ways you can manage targets and whatever else but you know that's a video from another day. We're just looking at the entry really for this for this video, right? Again, price moves in our direction, right? Gets stopped out of that. Let's actually just do that. And again, 
a similar setup, right? So look, we've got a three bar reversal, okay? So we got lower highs on price action, higher highs on the RSI, or high highs on price action, lower highs on the RSI, and we get a three bar reversal, okay? So price is pushed up, found some resistance, and we break and close below the previous candle, right? Sell at market, stops a few pips below the high, just looking for a two to one. And again, we hit, and we hit targets on that. Okay, so even though right that we've taken four trades, we've won two and we've lost two, we're still up. Okay, because obviously we've got a two to one. Okay, so you can see that we've actually we're actually up more than we lost, even though this is a 50-50, right? And again, you know, there's pl you could still be in this trade, okay, and just be managing this on the way up instead of taking these losers. So what you may have done is you may enter this position, take half of half off at a two to one, and maybe you trail your stops, okay. So maybe you're trailing your stops below the outside returns, okay. So again, look higher highs, right? Bang, you put your stop loss there, okay. Right, and you may not have got stopped out of that, right? But anyway, let's carry on as we were, okay? So look, lower lows on price action, okay? Higher lows on the RSI, right? Lower lows on price action, higher lows on the RSI. We've got a pin bar there, okay? So entries a few pips below the high, stops below the low, right? Looking for a two to one for this baseline test. Do we get it? And we just about get it, okay? But look, if we was to look inside this trade, what happens again, right? Higher highs on price action. Okay, lower highs on the RSI. But it's relative, okay? We've got quite a short pin bar or a short rejection, okay? And we get a short um, bit of relief, okay? So again, a very similar situation there, right? Obviously, we wouldn't have took that trade because we was in this one, okay? But look, again, very similar situation in this trade as well. Lower highs on price action, higher highs on the RSI. Okay, a pin bar, quite a big bar but again relative okay so we've obviously got a lot of trading volume through there we want to see a relative move okay so quite a big move up two point three two to one there you go and that actually was to hit okay we wouldn't have actually been in that right but it does hit Okay, again, very, very similar situation, right? And this is what I mean. We're not always looking for massive relief, okay? If it's a little signal we get, we're looking for a little bit of relief, right? Look, higher highs on price action, lower highs on the RSI, okay? We get our entry signal here, okay? So we'll be in a short position there, right? Stops above the high. Just looking for a two to one, okay? Because, it, you know, we're just looking for a relative reversal, right? Not necessarily looking for big trending moves. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you remember, right? This strategy or this, um, you know, this concept works best in ranging markets, okay? If you've got a, a market that's just trending and trending and trending, you are going to get caught up in a lot of this, okay? This is where... This is where this oh, this sort of situation here is where you're going to pick up a lot of your losers, okay? So when the market is just trending, 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 and you're getting entry signals, right? That's, that is, you know, that's disastrous for this type of strategy, okay? This works best in ranging markets. You see how we're in a range here? We're winning, right? We're in a range here, we're winning, right? We're in a range here, we're winning, okay? Again here, look, we're in a range, right? And we're winning trades, right? We've got a trade here, look. High highs on price action. Lower highs on the RSI. 
There, look. Entry signal into a short position. And, oof. Don't think we actually get this one. Stops a few fits below the high. Below the high. Yeah, might just get that, okay? Depending on where you had your stops and targets, right? But again, let's say that we was out of that trade here. Lower lows and price action. I think we just about get higher lows there, look. Just about, okay. And then look, we get a reverse. We may get stopped out of that. May not, okay. Anyway, another entry signal there. Right, where it had depended on how tight you got your stops, right? You may get stopped out of that, then enter and win the second position. Okay. No divergence there. But if you saw my mitigation video, you would have seen that this is actually a really good trade, okay? So a lower low, push up, tap down into that mitigation block and then higher prices, right? And that is sort of where this, um, this concept here or this setup is where this RSI divergent strategy sort of derives from, okay? So this is the RSI divergent strategy is just a, a beginner friendly look into smart money concepts, right? Accumulation and distribution and manipulation, okay? It's just a, an entry level, uh, you know, entry signal, okay? But it will help you get used to that, okay? You, eventually, you'll start noticing the manipulation and stuff, and you'll start noticing how price is reacting at certain levels whilst using the RSI divergent strategy or RSI divergence, and then you, you won't even need it. You'll be able to just sort of flick it off and... You know, you'll be able to use other things. So you'll be able to just notice sort of what's happening, right, through price action, okay? But it's a good start, right? It's a good thing to to look out for. So we'll just do a few more examples. I hope this is helping, right? Again, look, probably would have had a loser there. So higher highs and price action. That wouldn't be an entry, that wouldn't be an entry, and that's an entry in the opposite direction, so actually we wouldn't be entered. The reason these aren't entries here is because they're dojis, right? They're not pin bars, okay? There's a difference, right? Dojis are more indecisions, pin bars are more um, strength to the downside, right? Right, if this broke and closed below this candle, we could have entered in, but it didn't. You see some, you see a little bit of relief there, and then a pop up. RSI divergent, seeing some sort of relief, but I personally wouldn't have entered into this trade just because it just, yeah, I just wouldn't have entered into it. Not through RSI divergence, maybe through some mitigation. Okay, so if we were to drop down to a lower time frame, like a 15, I don't know why I'm getting into this and just making the video a bit complicated, right? You can see that we've got a mitigation block through there, push back down tap into that mitigation block and then lower prices so you could have got involved that way probably wouldn't have got involved through the rsr divergence if you was looking at that just purely as a strategy and the reason being is because this is your pin bar right let's bring this back right this is your pin bar and the way that we're explaining it in this video or the way that i find is best to start off trading this is to set your limit orders, right? And obviously, we wouldn't have got entered in, so we'd cancel our orders off, okay? Again, if that if this candle here had closed below, like that, and closed below, we could have entered on three bar reversal, but it didn't, okay? And you may, you know, you could enter here a little bit late, saying look we've got RSR divergence here, we've had a push down and then we've seen some inflection there. You could enter that as your three bar reversal, right, looking for a two to one. OK, 
okay, that is perfectly valid. Whether or not I would eventually, whether or not, you know, you're sort of just, you know, you've got to make rules for that, okay? So you've got to make sure that you would have actually entered it and you're not just saying that you would have entered it because, because you want your back testing results to be good, right? So again, lower lows on price action, higher lows on the RSI. Now this is a good example, okay, because this is where I have a rule in here, right? So I need, between the low, right, if I just zoom in a bit more. So between the low of the first move and the low of the second move, I need at least two candles, okay? So the whole thing needs to be made up of at least four candles, okay? So as you can see, this is the low, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the, the move is made up of four candles. If this was just three candles, then I wouldn't be able to take it, okay? So again, you can, you can bear this in mind and, and put it into your own testing if that's something you want to consider, which I suggest that you do consider something like that, okay? So look, again, a push down the whole move has to be at least four candles, okay? So I need two candles in between the in between the lower lows or the higher highs, okay? Whichever way around we're looking at it. Right, and that is just to stop false signals, okay? So again, look, this is this is a entry signal, this is a valid entry signal. We've got lower lows on price action, higher highs on the RSI, right? Set a limit order a few pips above the high, or it'd actually be a buy stop order, but you know. Buy stop order a few pips above the high, okay? Stop loss below the low, two to one, right? If we get entered in, then we'll and then we get entered into the trade and we don't get entered into the trade, okay? But we've got a valid entry signal on the next candle. So we cancel off our orders, readjust them. And we just about get tagged in there, okay? And messing around thinking about it right got some liquidity generation down here now so we may see a run of this liquidity a push back up and a tap back in right that'd be a great entry okay so look we run that liquidity right if we were to drop down to a lower time frame that would most likely be our entry down there let's just have a look i'm really digressing and i do apologize But it's all trading. It's all relevant, okay? So if we was just to drop down. Okay, that would be our order block through there. And this is going to help because this is what you want to sort of ideally um, turn your trading into. Long position on that. Rejection. And if we're looking for the same target, look, we've all of a sudden now got an 8 to 2 instead of a... Uh, an eight to one instead of a two to one okay and that's if this hits okay obviously it might not hit well i don't i don't know what happens here so if we just jump back out let's just jump back out but already you can see that we've made a lot more profit than we potentially would have done and we're unlucky there and we just get stopped out right just get stopped out of that trade, okay? But again, if you are versed in smart money concepts, you can see, look, push higher, tap that back down, and a retest into that order block, right? You may have just quit this trade there, right? Instead of, you know, mitigated your losses at a four to one and potentially taken uh, the reverse, okay? But obviously, we're not looking at that, right? Sorry to digress. Okay, so I think well, that would have obviously lost, right? But as you can see, right, we didn't do bad just for that little period that we've tested through. I would carry on, but I think you sort of get the point, right? Obviously, this is down, no matter how much I do and show you, right, it's ultimately going to be down to uh, you going out in the charts, looking at looking at these setups yourself, trying to identify them yourself, understanding the nuances of what you're doing, right that you can't teach that right that is just going to come down to you just spending the time in in the charts and really uh you know just getting busy with it 
building your reticular activating system. So I hope you got value from the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And wherever you are on your trading journey, I hope you have a good week and I'll see you on the next one.